What you're looking at is a Zebra fixed RFID reader that is set up in keyboard wedge mode so that whenever I put tags uh, within uh, the realm of the antenna that's connected to it, um, those tag reads are going to come out wherever my cursor is placed. If I switch to another program, again, the data just keeps coming wherever my cursor is repositioned. That can be a good and a bad thing. This is an application that might have some relevance to a, a kiosk where you have a single PC interface and reader. Um, in general, though, I would probably say it's probably something you do for um, quickly assessing whether a reader, antenna, or cable con uh, combination is functioning. Right? And I'm going to show you that this, this isn't as an easy thing to set up. It isn't super hard. It doesn't require a lot of software, but it does require one special file. And Zebra doesn't really make that file very easy to find. So I was going to help you out with that. You can contact ID Integration. We'll show you how to use that file, configure for your reader, and either build your own kiosk or use this as a setup tool. All right. So let's just take my tags off for a second. And I'm just going to go back and get rid of all my reads that are there. Let's just go back into here, reel all that. And you'll notice that my <clears throat> LED light is green. It looks white on my camera. I apologize. But that's green. The rest of them are off. And that's great. Now, if I take my USB cable, however, and that's what I'm using is USB to um, this is a printer cable, right? The square end, the B end, uh, not the blade connection. There is a USB host connector here as well. We don't use that for this application. Uh, we're using the printer connector. Now, there's not a printer, but we're using that connection. Now, when I disconnect, you'll see that the LEDs go into a red state. They go into an error state because I've set this reader up to auto boot. Once I add power to it, um, it's going to run this special keyboard connection program. And if it doesn't see that it has an active program, it's going to show an LED here that's showing it as being in an error state. Well, that's fine. We could actually just quickly insert or um, take out uh, this connection. If I'm just doing a quick test, that's how you could control the start and stop really simply. But let's put this in. Um, where do I want to do that? Maybe let's just skip over here to how do we make this work? Um, before I fire it up, let's turn, uh, I wanted to show you two menus on the fixed readers homepage. That readers homepage is here. I've logged in. And there's two menus here I want you to focus on, the communication menu and the applications menu. The applications menu shows a green light for uh, this application called Keyout that I have running. This is what we call an embedded application. All of these fixed readers are really just Linux PCs. They're Linux computers that are capable of running a program at boot up. And that's what this is. This is an application that configures a keyboard emulation so that you can use a USB cable to connect the reader to a PC and the data comes out wherever the cursor position is. I'm going to stop that application just by clicking there. And when I do that, I can go ahead and reconnect. Here, I'll put my camera back on so you can kind of see what I'm doing here. Now I'm going to reconnect. And you'll see that the error light goes off, and I'm left just with green, saying that, OK, I do have a valid USB connection. However, because the program is not running, there is no data that's going to come out when I put tags there. So I'll put some tags here, and nothing comes out, right? So again, there are two pieces to this process of making keyboard wedge work. The first piece is getting this application loaded. You can go out and browse to a file. I actually have a 
edited my file for this IP address and I'd have to do the same for a customer but it's a really quick edit and then I can point to that file uh, install it and then it appears in this pull down. I can set it to auto start so when I repower the um, fixed reader it'll start automatically. Okay? Otherwise you have to go in and manually start this through this web page and I don't think you really want to do that. So this is this is the first thing. Load that file. Don't start it but set it up so that it's, it's on the computer. Then you want to come in here to IoT connector and you want to configure an endpoint. That word bothers me. Don't know what it really means. If you're an IT guy, for the love of God, use human words. Um, anyway, you can add an endpoint. You can use any of these options. <clears throat> this list seems to grow all the time every time there's a new firmware update. So it's quite good, actually. But we're talking about keyboard emulation, so we're clicking that. We're defining what we want the suffix character after each tag read. Do you want it to do an enter or a tab or whatever? Uh, in this case, I just pick carriage return line feed. Uh, you can set up a delay. If your PC is slow, you might want to have a five millisecond delay between characters. It will slow down the rate at which data is entered into your PC, but at least it won't skip any characters. Right <clears throat> now, the last thing here is how much data do you want to buffer and store on the reader's memory when you have, um, excuse me, <clears throat> when you have more data from tags um, than the character output rate can handle. Right, you want to buffer that information on the PC or on the reader's uh, memory. And continue to send it um, um, as as it can. Okay, so set up your setting something like this. You'll have this endpoint configuration then here, and as you scroll down, you'll see uh, five different selections here. Don't worry about them so much. Just for the keyboard wedge demo here, for tag data interface number one, pick this endpoint that you created. Leave the rest at none, right? Then you can hit update. Um, when you go to connection, you can say uh, connect. It's already connected right now. Notice again, if I, if I take my camera, I'm gonna show you what happens. If I pull this out and I go back to the home page, you're gonna see that this is gonna go to disconnected. This tag data interface should go Sometimes it takes 20 to 30 seconds. There you go. So you really want to see those three connected. And then this management events interface, that's going to go to connected, um, I believe, when you start the program. But in any event, let's go back, plug this back in. All right? LED goes to green. This will go back to connected. Hopefully, you can see it does take a little time. Anything under IoT connector seems to take half a minute to actually reset. Um, it's just the way it is. All right, so our connection is good. Our operating mode, you can use this to identify which tags you want to report or ignore. Um, you can set the power level for the antenna. All of these settings, however, well, these don't do anything. You're not going to get any of these, um, these settings to actually come out. They just won't um, for keyboard wedge. Now, they are part of the data output message when you're using serial port communication or some of those other endpoint types like MQTT or HTTP post. Um, you'll <clears throat> you'll get more than one column of data when you check more things here. But just to prove that, I'm going to check a few more things here. Um, set properties. Yeah, it'll come back and say you can't do that. Um, yeah, can't do that. Let's just 
try that. I don't think it's going to even let me do that. Oh, it did. Okay, so I've got two things here anyway. So that's our final mode. You can even set up sensors to start and stop this, but we're not going to worry about that right now. Okay, so let's come back to the application. I'm going to pull up my text file. And let's just go ahead and hit start. And then we're going to very quickly go back here and put my cursor over here. All right. And <clears throat> put my tags here. Let's see if I can... Uh, Put, there we go. Put my tags on top, and you'll start to see the data flow again. And you notice I don't have any signal string because I'm only going to get the EPC value or the tag ID um, in keyboard wedge mode. Okay, so that's that's my quick demo of keyboard wedge mode. Again, it's um, it's probably limited use. Uh, limited either to a kiosk kind of thing like library checkouts or uh, you could use like a tool crib checkout that could work um, in this way you don't really need any sophisticated software or at least you can dumb down how sophisticated that software needs to be because your data is just you know whatever the input block is um, just remember you do need an application file um, and you need to edit that application file for your reader's IP address. Uh, other than that, it works great, and I think it's a really good troubleshooting thing, too. If I have any questions about the uh, integrity either of the reader or the cable, the antenna cable or the antenna itself, using keyboard wedge mode is a pretty quick way to debug the hardware.